screw. To the fine gentleman of trade, who I also do love to screw. But, uh, not in the same way. <laughs> so, what the fuck is a 17th century privateer like myself doing in this year 2017 with all the idiotic things like mobile phones and Twitter? One dark and stormy night, I was sailing down the Severn with a booty most precious. Now, when I say booty, I don't mean arse. I don't know what's wrong with you future folk that you call arse is booty, but I mean treasure of assault. She keeps secrets, and so do I. As usual, the waters were brown and choppy, and the clouds were heavy. The wind blew not only chill and bitter, but it carried something unnatural with it. A sound like a terrible honking of some giant bird that I'd never heard in 30 years on the seas. The wind blew fully strong, and so I ordered my crew to bang down the edges. It wasn't enough. This was the bastard of all storms, and all too soon the rain came beating down so that I couldn't see my hands in front of me. We lost control of my good ship, and while my mates went under deck, I said, fuck that. If I was going to die, I'd meet old Nick face to face and spit in his eyes. The storm whipped round me, tearing the masts, ripping up the boards, and I swore that I could hear my own words. I clung on to the figurehead's boobs for dear life. <laughs> Never true, but I would an angel. We was wrecked, and as the wind screamed in my eyes and battered at my body and the rain whipped at my back, I blacked out. I woke up. It was dark, and I was still clinging to the figurehead's tits like a baby. <laughs> I was alive. By Beelzebub, I was alive. I have spent many nights thinking on what happened, and how it was that my piratical life had been saved, and I brought forward in time here. Was this divine intervention? I was not worthy of any such miracles, no more worthy than any of my crew. No, I could only think it was the diabolical prayers I made in what I thought were my last moments to the boobs of the masthead. <laughs> yes, good folk, it was magic boobs what saved my life. <laughs> I had landed on a strange yet familiar land and could see most odd-looking natives. They wore ridiculous clothes, akin to what a strumpet might wear, not just the men. My own rings, no doubt unusual by the standard of these folk, did draw some attention. A posse of grommified lads and lasses came towards me, laughing and swearing. They were clearly in their cups. People after my own heart. <laughs> Oi, come in, Jack! One loud cried out. How the fuck do you know my name? I said. <laughs> and more importantly, where be the nearest punch house? After a brief misunderstanding about what a punch house was, <laughs> we found our way to a fine nearby establishment where I felt most at home. The decor inside, while too well lit, was not unlike inns I might usually frequent. <laughs> the bartender, a little ass worm of a man, would not accept my honest earned doubloons. <laughs> what the fuck is this, a euro? he said. <laughs> Sir, I said, what the fuck is a euro? That is a fucking doubloon. <laughs> we do not accept fucking doubloons, sir, he said. At this point, in need of liquid refreshment and growing somewhat frustrated, it may be that I pulled out my cutlass. I mean my actual cutlass and not my penis and a pervert among you. At that point, one of the lads I came in with was good enough to buy me a round, and I felt much better with some rum inside me. It had been mixed with a potent sweet concoction that they called Coke. <laughs> Blew my fucking mind, it did. <laughs> I had nothing like that in the 17th century. Except maybe opium, but in your wisdom, you folks don't sell that in cans. <laughs> so there I was, Bristol in the 21st century. I was a, a man out of time in need of a living. So I tried my hand at 21st century jobs. First up, I started as an insurance call agent, working with a diabolical device called a telephone. And let's just speak to people far away. One coxcomb said, Is it all like a pirate day? 
<laughs> Too late, pirate Davis, and I am a fucking pirate, you son of a whore! <laughs> that did not go down well, that cold sense of manager. <laughs> Escorted off the premises shortly after, and not before beating the call centre manager black and blue because he confronted me about something called identity verification, something else about conversion rates. <laughs> I'll convert you into a man, you scurvy bastard, I said, and I introduced my cutlass to his beer splitter. <laughs> that means cock. Yeah. Next, I tried my hand at a fabulous career called Barista. Which is a bit like a drug dealer, but for coffee. <laughs> Trouble is, good folk, being of a debauched persuasion, I could not resist sampling the wares to some excess. Oh, got I've had coffee before, but never such a thing as 17 caramel macchiatos. Oh, the resulting rampage with my cutlass, I mean, bit bitter, that means cock, led, I'm sorry to say, to my receiving a piece of paper called a P45, <laughs> which my manager explained meant. Fuck off and be fucking glad I don't get you interested. <laughs> Talk like a pirate when he said it, the bastard. <laughs> For my last and final job, good folk, I found my true modern vocation. I give pirate tours at the harbour side and of the secret places of Bristol <laughs> that pirates once used. I tell stories I remember from the past and between you and me I had a few made up ones for good measure. <laughs> but you might be surprised by which you which. Good and Gentle folk, I see a different world from what you see. Bristol is so much more than what it is now and what you see before you. History flows everywhere. Where you see an office block, or a shop, or a cafe, I see through them to the past that was. You see a street lamp. I see where a slave was whipped for talking. You see a green park. And I see where condemned folk dance the hemp and jig. Death and disease. The past was not romantic. It was not an adventure. It was hard and it was dangerous and it, it smelled very, very bad. <laughs> Worse even than the Cheltenham Road on a Saturday night. Oh. <laughs> Good and gentle folk, I guide my tours. And just for one night, I'd like to give you people a small taste of the past and the Bristol that was. And then I hope you leave feeling glad of what you have and glad of the Bristol you've got. It's not perfect. There's still crime. That's never been different and never will, I venture. But Bristol is better than it was. And from where I'm standing, you goatish bastards have got a lot to be thankful for. <laughs> Don't forget it. Ha <laughs> ha!